Just who was this Aesop? Who could he be? Well, in case you're thinking, it's all Greek to me, you're right. He was a Greek slave born around 600 BC, and the wisdom that he shared has been passed down through history. We're the Greek chorus, and we are all here with his fabulous fables that we'd like to share. You're bound to know his stories that we're about to tell. We're sure that once you hear them, you'll say, they ring a bell. Now, some of these stories, we must admit, we've slightly changed around a bit. But please don't get your nose out of joint. It was carefully done to prove the point. And just in case there's still some doubt, it's time to bring old Aesop out. Welcome, friends. Oh. So glad you're here to enjoy these stories that we share. Listen well, and when they're through, you'll find you've learned a thing or two. And as you watch, you'll also see they're filled with common sense. So, let's begin as we don't want to keep you in suspense. Our first fabulous fable features a funny bunch of froggy creatures. They were living in a marsh that was damp and cool till they wound up in hot water for breaking a rule. So now let's join this croaking chorus of critters who are happily standing before us. I can't believe that I got us evicted. If you recall, it was what I predicted. The sign said roasting marshmallows is restricted. Oh, but when it comes to sweets, I'm so addicted. Well now, we're really up a creek. And we have to find a new home by early next week. Who knows what troubles will unfold if we're left out here in the cold. Let's not get bogged down with worry. I'm sure we'll find something if we hurry. These real estate ads say prices are steep. Wait, here's one that says, I'll sell you a swamp real cheap. Oh, oh, no. I I oh, I oh, 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 come over here, everyone. Look, it's, mm. a, it's a well. Oh, no. But this would be a really cool place to dwell. Well, your bubble I don't want to burst, but I say let's not jump in head first. Oh, Frumpy, you're such a worrywart. Don't make me beg. Come on, last one in's a rotten egg. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, Frumpy! Now what's wrong? Well, I don't want to sing a sad sorry song, but in the fall, when the well is dry, you'll never get out, because the walls are too high. Oh, no! The worry wart to the rescue, in case you had a doubt. We'll find a rope and help you get out. The moral to this story is pretty clear to me. Look before you leap, or you may meet your destiny. Our next fable tells of a grasshopper dude who had a real what me worry attitude and some ants who showed him without a doubt that there was something he should have worried about. Well, well, my good friends, it's such a beautiful day. So why are you busily working away? We anticipate a cold winter season, so we're stocking up with very good reason. How foolish to waste a lovely spring day working when you could all be out at play. You won't catch me doing those kinds of things. I'll be dancing and singing and testing my wings. Mr. Grasshopper, with your ant icks, we strongly disagree. Our anthem is... Be prepared for every eventuality. So, we're gathering all the things we might need to be sure that our winter's a good one indeed. Let's see. We have antiperspirant. We have antiseptic cream. And antifreeze, too. And don't forget the antipasto, because nothing else will do. Winter's months away, so why should I worry? There's plenty of time, so there's no need to hurry. If you don't enjoy life while you're in your prime, you'll all be antiques before your time. He's so antagonizing. Now I'm feeling sick. Someone please bring me some ant acid quick. As might be expected, 
the cold weather came, and that foolish grasshopper was put to shame. Those ambitious ants had been working away while he was out singing and playing all day, and so he had no food, needless to say. When he begged them for a morsel, a bug or a cricket, they told him no way would they be his meal ticket. They warned him not to come around anymore and said, sing for your supper at some other door. The moral to this story is pretty clear, if I might say. Don't put off until tomorrow what can be done today. Our next fable stars a girl who got carried away and was left with more than the piper to pay. She let her mind wander so far off base she couldn't get it back to its starting place. La 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 I'm off to market with milk in my pail and what a shopping spree I'll have with all the cash from the sale. Yes, first thing I'll buy are chicken eggs by the batch, put them in the incubator, and after they hatch, I'll have all those chickens laying eggs by the score, and then I'll have so much money, I'll buy goodies galore. Mm, let me see. First I'll buy dresses, then scarves for my tresses, a fine strand of pearls for only the prettiest of girls, designer shoes for my dainty feet, a box of chocolate truffles for a luscious treat. Everyone will be so jealous, but I won't care. I'll just toss my head and stick my nose way up in the air. Ah! Oh no! What have I done? How will I ever get out of this one? As you can see, she got carried away then cried over spilled milk for the rest of the day. And the only eggs for that poor milkmaid was the giant size egg she laid. The moral to this story I will gladly tell. So gather round and listen well. Don't count your chickens before they hatch, or you're sure to find yourself with troubles by the batch. This fabulous fable of long, long ago we're certain is one that you're all sure to know. A tortoise and a hare are the stars of this show, with some hare do's and hare don'ts that you'll want to know. So now, off to the forest, let us descend to a hare whose hair's about to be standing on end. I am the greatest, I am the best, I am so much faster than all of the rest. And I come by my talents, honestly, you see. It's all in the genes, it's my hair edity. We're tired of your bragging and your conceited ways. Someone's sure to outrace you one of these days. I've raced since I was born and no one's beat me since. I'm not conceited, no way. I am convinced. I'm tired of it, Harvey. You're always in our face. It's time for one of us to challenge you to a race. I, Toby Tortoise, say I'd like to try it. A tortoise race a hare? Now, wouldn't that be a riot? That's the most harebrained idea yet. Come on, Harvey. Do we have a bet? <laughs> Hairifically, hysterical. No effort will be spent in my winning this truly hair-raising event. We'll set tomorrow at nine for the race to begin. Now, let's decide what the winner will win. Well, prizes really aren't my thing, but I wouldn't mind a delicious 14-carat wing. When I win, Toby Tortoise, better say your farewell, because my prize will be a lovely box made out of your tortoise shell. Your hair trigger temper, Harvey is out of line. Now, let's all meet here tomorrow promptly at nine. The race was on and Harvey said, I'll win this in a snap. So halfway through, he decided that he'd take a little nap. But let's take you back now and pick up the pace as we find out who won this harrowing race. <sighs> What a truly lovely day to check out the flowers <sighs> as I go on my way. Now let's see if I've done this right. The finish line should soon be in sight.
Now, isn't that Harvey snoring away? Guess he's not worried about winning today. Mm, we better wake him up, that's what I say. Come on, let's throw some with a splash of hairspray. <laughs> come on, come on, Harvey, you better hurry. <gasps> Take a chill pill. There's no need to worry. Oh, I'll hop to it now. Oh, oh no, can it be? Is, is that the tortoise out there ahead of me? Wait a minute. I, I fell asleep. That's not fair. Oh, yes, it is. The tortoise won by a hair. Sorry, Harvey. It looks like you'll be singing the blues. Because you know the saying, you snooze, you lose. Harvey really blew it, and I guess you could say this time that stray hair went really astray. And losing that race caused Harvey such distress, he got a hair transplant and left no forwarding address. Now here's our friend Aesop with a little clue to the moral of this story that you've been privy to. Always proceed at a calm and even pace and you'll find that slow and steady will surely win the race.